So now in this video, we're going to look at the 4050, 4050, however you uh, say it. It's actually the CD 4050BE integrated circuit by Texas Instrument. And if I turn the light right, should be able to read it even without a loop. So it's pretty nice right there. This has more distinct writing than a lot of integrated circuits. So it's uh, quite a bit easier to see the uh, writing on it. So in any case, this is a very simple circuit. So this is a hex buffer integrated circuit. So there's six buffers. We're only using one. So there's two pins to power the integrated circuit. So pin number one goes to the positive rail and then pin number eight to the negative rail. The uh, pins we're using are two and three. You can see that right there. That's one of the buffers. So the resistor and the LED, of course, are the output. And uh, it's a load. It's being powered right now. And the input is uh, pin number three right there, third pin down. Now there's five more buffers on here. You can use them or uh, ignore them. doesn't matter. So we have the, uh, let's get rid of that loop there. We have right below it, again, the outputs are on top of the inputs. So that was actually the input. So we got output, input, output, input for two other buffers down there. It's a little more complicated to the right. Of course, always consult the data sheet while you're wiring and make sure you're getting uh, the right pins for what you need. So the top pin there, pin 16, is not connected. 15 and 14 are another buffer. So output, input, and then uh, 13 here is not connected. So 12 and 11 are a buffer, output, input, and then where are we at now? 10 and 9. So 10 and 9, we got output and input. But it's the same as this. So pretty, pretty straightforward. Now, let's look at what this actually does. So to begin with, we will might as well go to the multimeter here. We saw we have a 1 kilo ohm resistor at the output going to an LED. The LED is to ground. So the output is high right now. The LED is on. We're going to turn the trim pot until it's closer to the negative rail, less than halfway to, or uh, more than halfway to the negative rail, but less than half of the power supply voltage. It's a voltage divider. You uh, put the voltage of the power supply right there. We might as well measure that right now. I have it set to five volts. And luckily, the voltage doesn't really matter. The integrated circuit works pretty much the same. So 5.15, we will look at the voltage. So the wire comes from the uh, output of the trim pot, which is the middle one. Going to a uh, pin three, the input. There you can see it's slightly less than 2.5 volts. And the output is low. We turn the trim pot so that the voltage is slightly above 2.5. And it uh, looks pretty much halfway there, so it'll be interesting to see what uh, the voltage is. And there you can see it's actually not quite 2.5. That's interesting. But uh, it's about halfway. So right when it turns off, let's take a look at the voltage. And there you can see about, uh, so yeah, maybe 2.4. But in any case, it's about halfway. So another thing we can do, it is sourcing the voltage or the current right now when the load is on. And so we can zoom in. We have the short lead. The cathode LEDs are a type of diode. They only conduct in one direction. Short lead, the cathode was in the negative rail. Longly, the anode was uh, to the resistor, which comes from the output. We're going to turn it around this way. We're going to put the long lead, the anode, to the positive rail. The short lead, the cathode, to the output. And now, again, we have less than half of the power supply voltage at the trim pot. So now the LED is on, but the output is still low. It's just the other side of the LED is to the uh, positive rail. So we can keep going lower. The LED is going to stay on. We go higher. Now the LED turned off. So we can measure that. Also, we'll notice something else interesting about the output. So right now we should have about the positive rail right there. Let us turn the LED around so that was sourcing no that was sinking the current when the LED is on this way the there we go let's go there so right now the output is sourcing the current it's more positive that's right the LED was off there we go 
and you can see we got some voltage drop but that's because the LED is taking up current so we'll get back to the sinking and sourcing coming up we can take a 100 kilo ohm resistor go to the negative rail and you'll see that it holds the voltage quite a bit better I think we still lose a speck of voltage but it holds pretty well so at that level of current which isn't very much it holds pretty well let's take a 10 kilo ohm resistor and you can see it drops a bit but still it's holding better so the less current you demand of it the better it holds the uh, rail voltage so let's go back right now when we put the cathode to the negative rail the anode to the resistor the output is sourcing current it is positive the other side of the load is negative so we follow current positive to negative that's just how we trace it if you want to think of electron flow electrons flow negative to positive but usually when you're talking about current you're imagining positive to negative it's just an unfortunate uh, reality that historian uh, historical scientists thought there's a positive flow from positive to negative so we design and still look at our circuits as if that's true but positive move in one way is the same as negative move in the other way in any case now the LED is off we have a high output but uh, the anode is to the positive side of the power supply so we have positive there positive there there's no reason for current to flow we're gonna turn the trim pot down now now you can see the LED is on so it's positive there so we follow the path now positive to negative so now it is sinking current you can think of the power supply sourcing current there and then it's sinking into the uh, output right there and we will look at the voltage so even though the LED is on right now the the uh, output is low right there and let's look at it without the LED so the LED prevents it from going to the rail also let's go back to the uh, normal setup where the LED is on when the output is high so let's try to get it right when the LED turns on let's try to get it right there so it's pretty good at uh, turning on so we saw before with the LED it drops the uh, voltage so two volts out and uh, that was lower so even without it I think now because we're about halfway we didn't quite get to the rail but if we go up a little bit more now I think it'll be at the rail without a load right there yeah there you can see the rail voltage so the halfway point it gets a little iffy but uh, so there there are a few limitations so now we will increase the voltage and uh, so a little bit above 10 volts I think this goes up to 20 volts but uh, don't quote me on that make sure you check the uh, data sheet but in any case now we have 10 volts at the rail just a spec less and 10 volts at the output of course we add a load that affects it a bit of course so we're gonna lose I think about the same amount of voltage and it looks like it's about the, the LED voltage trap and uh, for the most part but in any case we don't have to just deal with 5 volts that's the main takeaway it works exactly the same it's that halfway point of the uh, power supply voltage the outputs either on fully or off fully right there and let's just do 15 volts look at it again and uh, so 15 volts at the rail just a, a little bit shy the uh, trim pot it's a little less than seven and the output is off let's go up so we can go to the rails too. the input does not let any current go through it so we don't have to worry about too much current we can go all the way to the positive rail if we want that's another thing so now we have 14.85 uh, coming in that is the uh, rail voltage going out we got 13 but uh, of course if we remove the LED There you can see we got uh, yep the exact same as the uh, power supply voltage without a load so very uh, low current demanding load so a lot of impedance the voltage holds better so whatever you need that's just uh, 
the basic properties of this component for the most part. It outputs the rail voltage when you have a high input and it outputs the negative or the low part of the uh, rail when you have a lower than about halfway but as we saw at right about halfway it, it wavers a little bit but still not too bad and then even with a load you know we lost like a volt and a half but still that's uh, probably not too bad for most circuits so if that's too much you got to adapt your circuit for that but in any case I just started looking at this component today and it's uh, as you can see a pretty easy component I got this uh, kit yesterday and uh, as you can see we got all these I'm just kind of going through them see what all they all are and I'm gonna go with the easiest ones first so I'm new to using integrated circuits like this and uh, as I learn more I'll look at the harder ones more and hopefully come up with interesting demonstrations so they're uh, really not that hard to use once you research them a little bit and come up with some circuits to uh, make use of them. So thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.